Namaste and greetings to you all and thank you once again for joining me. I'm Anita from Yoga on the Road. Just because a yoga form is more complex should not mean that you do not have access to some component of the pose in order for you to be able to reap the benefits of that pose. That is the theme for today. We are looking at a pose called Ustrasana or Camel Pose, which is quite a deep back bend. This pose um, includes benefits such as um, counteracting poor postural choices. So it's this massive big back bend, which is completely opposite to what to the postural choices that we would make in a day. So it does things like um, stretches your spine um, and it tones your back. So in our day-to-day -day life, and particularly with the use of devices now, we're creating this kind of um, endemic, I guess, of rounded posture, um, hunched back, and this pose literally encourages you to do the opposite. So we're going to step through um, at different actions that you can move towards to help support that opening of the chest and the drawing back of the shoulder blades, the opening of the hips. Um, it is such a lovely pose, practiced um, morning or evening. All right, so if you're keen to get started, there is a few props and supports that will really um, help to accentuate your practice today. So grab yourself a blanket so you have some support for your knees today. Grab yourself a bolster, um, which is this big, thick pillow or something that resembles that. You will need a block and a chair or something that offers you a little bit of height and support at that level. So take a moment to set up your space, grab all those things and let's meet back on the mat. Oh, in. Or on. All fours. So you'll have your knees positioned just behind the line of your hips. Your hands will be just in front of the line of your shoulders. And then with a nice deep and full in breath, we'll just use this practice to warm up to our breath. Draw the belly down towards the bolster, look slightly forward, draw the shoulders back so the breath fills that space in the chest. And then as you exhale, use the squeezing up of the navel to push the breath out. Take a deep and full breath in. Take a slow and complete breath out. And in your own time, move through six full deep breaths. As you move through your last one, make your last one the slowest. So really concentrating and focusing on a nice slow inhale. And if it helps to support you moving into your practice, a nice, full and audible exhale, releasing any tension that your awareness is drawn to. And then we'll all meet back in neutral spine. This time as you inhale, Shift your body weight forward, so the shoulders move out over the wrists. Lower the thighs and the 
hips and you want the bolster to be positioned somewhere between your hips and your navel. Draw the inner seams of the feet together, press down firmly, lift the kneecaps, lower slowly. As you inhale here, draw the heels in towards the sit bones. Press the hip points forward and down into your bolster. Lift and open strongly through the chest, drawing the shoulder blades back. Lower the upper body only about halfway. And then on your exhale, you're going to push down into the hands, roll over onto the knees, settle back into child pose. Take two breaths here, and we'll move through that twice more yet. Inhale, reposition your body to that tabletop position, ensuring the position of your knees and hands supports you. Inhale, belly moves down towards the mat. Exhale, round through your spine. Inhale, come back to a neutral spine. Exhale, shift your body weight forward. Shoulders move out over the wrists. Lower the thighs, the hips, the navel, ensuring that that bolster is positioned somewhere between the hips and your navel. Exhale, lower part way. Draw the inner part of the feet together. Press down firmly into the feet. Lift the kneecaps up. And then lower the knees. Draw the soles of the feet in towards the sit bones. Inhale, cobra. So extend through the arms as much or as high as you comfortably can. Keep drawing and encouraging a nice full and open chest. Look up if it feels okay for your neck. And then continue to push back, heels drawing in towards the sit bones, towards a child's pose. Rest for two breaths. Last flow. Reposition the body back in tabletop. Inhale, draw the belly down towards the bolster. Exhale, push and round up by lifting through the navel. Inhale, return to a neutral position. Exhale, slowly rock the body weight forward. Shoulders shift out over the wrists. Pause here briefly. One breath in. On your exhale, lower the thighs, the hips, the navel to position your body optimally. Exhale, lower slowly, about part way down. Draw the feet together. Lift the kneecaps up and then push the knees into the ground as you draw the heels in towards the sit bones. Press strongly into the arms, extending through the elbows. Draw the shoulders back onto your back, look up. Take a breath here. And then as you slowly start to move back towards this child's pose position, take your bolster or support with you, place it in between the heels and the sit bones, come to rest in child pose. Include whatever supports you need to make this position restorative for you. Inhale, come back to sit in this supported Varasana or hero's pose. We're just going to move through a quick arm flow to open through the chest and draw the shoulders back. So as you inhale, palms face up. 
As you exhale, interlace the hands, press and extend firmly away so that the shoulders draw apart from one another. Draw the navel back. On your next inhale, feel lengthening through the spine. Press the palms of the hands up towards the ceiling. And on your exhale, release the hands, interlace the hands behind the back, press and draw the shoulders together. And you really want a feeling of drawing the shoulder blades firmly together. And then if it's um, in your practice, extending your elbows down and away from you. Just breathing normally here. And move through that twice more. Release the hands. Inhale, palms face up, resting on the thighs. Exhale, interlace the hands. Press the palms away from you. Draw the navel back towards the spine, having a feeling of hollowing through the navel. Inhale, lengthen through the spine. Press the palms up and away from you. Exhale, interlace the hands behind the back. Press and draw away from you. Last one. Inhale, palms face up. Exhale, interlace, palms push away. Inhale, lift up, lengthen the spine. Exhale, interlace, hands. Palms or fists press away. Nice open space in the chest. Keep the chin slightly tucked in towards that collarbone notch, creating a nice length in the spine. Slowly release. We're going to set up for our next um, yoga form which is bridge preparation. So this shape is really a recreation of Ustrasana or camel pose, but it's laying on our back. So this one, you will need your block. Come to lie on your back. We'll talk about a few of the features that you'll be accessing in your representation of Ustrasana or camel pose. Take your block so that it's in between your thighs. Draw the feet together, draw the knees together. So it's really encouraging you to squeeze the block here. Let the arms rest down by the side. <clears throat> Inhale into the lower belly. As you exhale, hollow the belly by drawing the navel back towards the spine. Once you feel that, Press down into the feet, squeeze the block, lift the hips up off the ground. And then once your hips are up off the ground, continue to squeeze the block. If you can even kind of eyeball the block, have a feeling of lifting your hips up towards the ribs and pressing your sit bones down towards the back of the knees. So the glutes are quite engaged here. Remember this action, we'll be using it once we're on our knees. Exhale, slowly lower. Keep squeezing the block, lower vertebrae by vertebrae, top of the spine to the base of your spine. Once you lower, completely let the body relax. And then we'll move through that twice more. Just position the feet or have a feeling of having the feet so that you can reach closely towards the heels. And then we'll move through this again. Feet together, knees together. Squeezing the block firmly. Breathe into the belly. Exhale, squeeze and hollow the navel so the spine feels as though it's moving, oh sorry, navel feels as though it's moving down towards the spine. Once you have that engagement, squeeze the block, press down into the feet, lift the hips up, and then we'll make those readjustments. So have a feeling of lifting the hip points closer to the ribs, 
squeezing the glutes and pressing the sit bones down towards the back of the knees or the calves. And that's just to create a little bit of length in the lower spine there. Hold for three, two, one. And again, you're lowering from the top of the spine to the sacrum or the base of the spine. Last option here, and I'm gonna add a variation. So your option is to just stick with what we've been doing as well, or remove the block and turn it into a restorative pose, but meet yourself where you need to. So big breath in to the lower belly. Breathe out, hollow the navel by drawing the navel down towards the spine, pressing the spine into the mat. Press down into the feet. Come up as high as you comfortably can. Again, if you can eyeball the block, you're lifting the hip points in towards the ribs, squeezing the glutes, pressing the tailbone down. Your option here is either to take your block and place it on whatever level to support your hips, or if we're taking it a step further, Press down into the balls of the feet, lift the heels and tuck the hands in beneath the back of the hips. Lower the heels to the ground and then really reinforce that action here. Imagine you have pockets in the back of your pants, yoga pockets, and you're pressing down into the pockets in order to shift the hips towards the ribs and shift the tailbone down towards the back of the knees. Wherever you've arrived, take three breaths here. If you have a block beneath the hips, Press down into the feet, lift the hips. If you have your hands beneath your hips, press down into the balls of the feet, release the hand, and together we'll all move from the top of the spine to the base of the spine with slowness, mindfulness, and that's it. All right, take your feet, and just heel toe them out about mat distance, draw the knees in together. This will help to relieve any tension in the lower spine. And if it helps to support you, you can even gently sway the knees from side to side. Heel toe the feet back together. Either rock and roll along the spine to come to see the position or lay on one side and use the support of your arms to help you up. So coming into our focus pose or our variation of the focus pose. Come to rest on your knees and have the knees together. You will play around with your feet position. So you can either press them firmly into the mat. I find that if I'm pressing into the balls of my feet, then my feet aren't, aren't so far away for me to reach. So to work through the first step of Ustrasana, place your hands at the base or that bony part at the back of the hips. And then to start with, we're just moving through this three times. So squeeze the knees together. Feel the glutes start to tighten and then you're using your yoga pockets to press the hips down, which will, uh, sorry, press the sacrum down, which will lift the hips up and then lean into the hips. So use your hands to push forward and down at the same time. Draw the shoulders back together. You just find your limit or your capacity. 
and then to come out, we're still using the support of the hands, so press the hands firmly down and forward to use this to come back into this position. We're gonna move that through that a couple more times. So press the hips forward and down, feel the glutes engage. Keep pressing into those yoga pockets, push the hips forward and down, draw the chest back. And if you think that your foot is within reach, you could even try and tap with one hand to see exactly where that's at. Tap with the other hand to see where it's at. Keep pressing down and forward. And then you're going to use that support of the back of your hips to lift you all the way up. Feeling for actions that are alive and also that are softening. One last time and then we're going to add a prop to this. Press down and forward into the hips. Feel the hip points lift in a little closer to the ribs. Sit bones press down towards the knees. Keep pushing forward and down. Arch back so that the chest is nice and exposed to the ceiling. Find the neck position that's right for you. Wherever you've arrived, take three breaths. And then slowly push back into the hip pockets. Come all the way up. Relax the arms. Take a moment of rest if that means in um, child's pose for you, then meet yourself there. And then let's come up, let's set ourselves up for the last supported variation at Wolfstrasana this morning. So grab your chair, place it at the end of your mat, and then you're going to place your bolster or support on the chair. You'll need a space to rest your feet in and under. Once you've set yourself up, similar action. So the knees press together. You're either pressing down into the top of your feet or the, the ball of your feet. Press your hands into that, the little yoga pockets at the back of your pants. As you press the hips down and forward, start to find the support that you're coming to rest on. Keep the hips moving forward, the glutes engaged, the neck in a position that's comfortable to you. And feel the lovely benefits of just opening the chest up. Expanding through all those muscles to help support the breath and the fullness of the breath. Feel the opposition in this action. Keep breathing and just noticing what sensations arise for you. Keep continuously making any adjustments that help support you. And then to come out of this shape, again, you're pressing firmly down and forward in the hips and then coming out slow. Slow is really the key for, for here as it's quite a deep back bend. Release the hands, make any movement to your wrist to support all that wrist flexion that we've been moving into. And then the last pose that we're moving into today is a lovely spinal twist that will help counter any of that back bend that we have done. Okay. Start by
spine sitting in this side sitting position and then you're just going to flush or move the bolster right up against your hips. Then you're going to turn your chest towards the bolster, frame the bolster with either hand, keep twisting the chest and then you're slowly going to start to lower the chest towards the bolster. At this stage, you can hug the arms beneath the bolster, rest your head, play around with the neck position. So looking with the head position towards the knees, it's much softer on the spine or on the spinal twist. Otherwise, just play around with the head position looking away and just noticing how that changes the intensity of the twist. Let your body soften into the support below you. Just take a moment to completely be aware of all that you're noticing. You can, during this shape, see if you can um, lift a little bit away and just move a little deeper into the twist and then reposition the arms. Take another three breaths here. slowly come out of that we're moving to the other side for ease for you you might just flip the knees move to the other side for me to demonstrate to you I'm just going to flip my pillow set myself up inside seated position on the opposite side frame your bolster ensure that your chest is moving down towards the the pillow and already you'll be feeling quite an intense spinal stretch here and then you'll slowly start to lower your chest down towards the bolster you can hug the bolster find the right position for your neck that supports you Deepen the twist by lifting the chest and resettling the chest. And let your body completely melt into this shape. Just use this little mini rest practice here to allow yourself to consider your practice this morning, to allow yourself to integrate this practice just in this position of rest. Stay as long or as little as you need here. Give yourself the time to soak up your practice. <clears throat> It is time for me to sign out and say goodbye. If you've enjoyed this practice, please do not forget to leave a comment. If you haven't subscribed by hitting the little bell, um, do that. You'll be notified of all future tutorials coming your way. I thank you once again for joining me from my heart to your hearts. Namaste.